Hi, in a previous video, which I'll link in down below, and at the end, we took a look at this uh, Omicron Labs Bode 100 uh, frequency response analyzer slash vector network analyzer, whatever you want to call it. It's brilliant. Um, but let's do a tear down of this puppy to see what's inside, and also this uh, wideband injection transformer as well. We're talking about uh, five and a half thousand US dollars worth of kit and a what is it, a 500 US dollar wideband injection transformer worth every cent. So these things are not cheap, they are professional bits of kit for uh, power supply analysis, component analysis, uh, basically anywhere from almost DC up to 50 megahertz. So this is supposed to have a a 24-bit uh, superheterodyne uh, receiver in it and all sorts of awesome stuff. I want to do this first. So we've got the BWIT 100 1 hertz to 10 megahertz wideband injection uh, transformer. It's just a one-to-one -one, uh, transformer, 600 volt uh, CAT2 isolation, uh, just BNC input, just the uh, earth terminal, which is it'd just be the uh, outer case here, and uh, just banana plugs, a balanced uh, output on this side, isolated. So let's take a look. Now these things are... Uh, you know, there's not many of these on the market, these wideband injection transformers, because they need a really wide bandwidth. I mean, to go to 1 megahertz to 10 megahertz, and this thing's almost ruler flat over that 1 hertz to 10 megahertz range. It's absolutely amazing uh, performance. And as far as I'm aware, there's no off-the-shelf transformer that does this. So this is no doubt going to have some uh, custom-made transformer in it. Uh, in this case, probably wound by uh, nude virgins in Austria, no doubt. So let's check it out. Hopefully they haven't potted this thing. So that's my fear, is that uh, they're trying to protect their secrets because um as far as i'm aware like you can't really buy an off-the-shelf wideband injection transformer for less than 500 bucks so you know you're paying paying 500 bucks for a transformer which sounds like a lot but try and get this sort of performance yourself and you'd spend a month of sundays dicking around experimenting trying to get it just right with your tongue at the right angle and Let's have a look. Here we go. Oh, hello. Thank you, Omicron Labs, for not potting this baby. Look at that. It looks very simplistic, doesn't it? They've got a core in there, and they've just got, uh, in this case, here we go, we've just got the uh, twisted pair. I don't know what's inside that. Is that some sort of... They've, uh, they've celastic that under there. Not sure if we're going to be able to see in there. Is that some sort of uh, magnetic voodoo just to take the edge off something? Or is that some sort of uh, protection, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Anyway, we've got a uh, no doubt uh, choice uh, ferrite ring in there with just, uh, twi in this case, uh, twisted pair here and here. Yeah, they actually, look, they mix, you know, they mix up the output and the input and wind them. Like that, I don't know. If anyone, I don't know my winding transformer terminology names. If, if you know what that particular uh, technique is called, then uh, please leave it in the comments. But there you go. That is a 500 buck wide band ejection transformer. But as I said, it is hand wound by nude virgins and it is tweaked and characterized and performance characterized uh, to get that flat response. And as far as I'm aware, there's no off the shelf transformer which will meet um, this sort of spec. And I don't think that's actually uh, Litz wire or anything special like that. I think that's just uh, solid core. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's probably just, uh, you know, a single strand uh, solid core wire. And, sorry to break it to you, but uh, that's not some weird ass uh, magnetic voodoo in there. It is a fuse and they've just soldered uh, the wire directly onto the end cap. Um, <laughs> that's pretty how you do it. What, they couldn't do an inline uh, holder? Anyway, that looks like it's a uh, ceramic fuse and these things, which I thought were some magnetic voodoo, are just <laughs> cable ties. <laughs> 
Anyway, it is uh, constructed with care, and uh, I like how it's on the uh, rubber in the bottom, and that just uh, squishes wedges between that, so it's not going to flap around in the breeze in there. So there you go. If you don't think that's worth uh, 500 bucks, then uh, I guarantee you could uh, corner the market with a low-cost wideband injection transformer if you could sell one for 100 bucks. Everyone would want one. And uh, for, you know, power supply uh, injection testing and stuff like that. And if you can do it and get similar performance to this, go for it. Now for this bad boy, the Bode 100. Let's go. Again, made in Austria. Hi to all my Austrian viewers. Brilliant. There's the back panel. That's very nice. Um, that's just the uh, ground earthing uh, thing for the entire... Well, it's not earthing because it's uh, not mains earth because it's a uses a floating uh, plug pack supply input, but it does uh, ground the entire case. So, just two screws on here. It's in a beautiful case. I love this. Oh, are you ready for it? Oh, metal cans. They're not soldered, so we can lift the lid on those babies. Oh, geez, it's a bit naked, isn't it? All the magic's happening in the cans. Ah, oh, we're in like Flynn, our Tira Cyclone 4. So, yeah, all the magic's in the tin. But, oh, geez, that's not your regular FR4 uh, class PCB. That's some, you know, uh, controlled uh, dielectric uh, Rogers special. There we go. That might be able to give us some input into the uh, type of PCB, perhaps. Yeah, H4M blah blah. That's quite a nice uh, DC to DC converter section. Uh, all Rubicon caps down in here. You know, I won't go into detail, but eh, that's what you expect on the input. Um, so what is it? We've got a 19 volt, uh, sorry, 9 to 24 volt uh, DC. So it's a wide range uh, input, uh, nominal 10 watts. So anyway, like I don't think it'd use 10 watts uh, driving this thing. Then we've got some more uh, local regulation right next to the metal can. We've got a 10-pin uh, header there, so that's probably some sort of uh, programming type thing. We've got duplicate uh, circuitry up here for the next can, but we don't have that for the top can because uh, you expect these two cans to be identical because they're both the uh, receivers. They're, they should be identical uh, receiver channels. You know I'm a Reed Relay fanboy. What have we got down in there? Is that a meter? Sweet. So that's obviously, uh, does, you can see the traces going in. I think that's obviously uh, designed to um, join the two channels together, uh, that internal, uh, the, the switching. So obviously it's at a non-critical point where they can go outside the can. Hmm, we've got some sort of filtery doodad going on in here. Look, some sort of multi-stage uh, filter. We've got jumpers. Don't know what that is. Not a little uh, header, some sort of uh, test. I doubt it's a programming header. Maybe just to, yeah, do some uh, production testing, something like that. Ooh, what's that? It's an analog devices, baby. And that's an AD9851. There's our uh, DDS generator for our 50 megahertz uh, waveform output. So that's got a 10-bit uh, DAC in it, no worries. So that'll do the business for uh, generating your uh, test waveform. No problems. And next to it, no, that's not an analog device, even though it's got AD245. I think that's just a um, like a 74AC series uh, 245 TTL chip. And after that, we move through this uh, filtery doodad section into an AD8007. That's a high speed uh, amp, basically, so like 600 meg or something like that. So, yeah, that'll do the business. <laughs> and there's our little crystal in there. Oh, it's teeny tot. But uh, apparently this has a 2 ppm class uh, reference oscillator in it, so uh, that would be pretty schmick. Who'd it want to be for the money? And the processor section, well, Altera Cyclone 4 with some memory attached, it's not the least bit special, so I'm not going to go into uh, details there, but looks like, you know, we might have a uh, JTAG header up the top here somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know, there's a uh, FTDI... USB driver, meh. So that's just basically uh, sampling, you know, buffer and then just dumping it out to the USB port because there's no real processing done on this thing. It's just basically uh, control and uh, data buffering and sampling, stuff like that. And here's what we've come here to see. This is our uh, source. So this will also contain, uh, well, no, does it, uh, it shunts it through to, the, um, to measure the reflective uh, power. 
Anyway, let's have a look. Ah, come on. Come on. We're in like Flynn. Ah, oh, bunch of reed relays and not much else. Aw. Oh. We've got yet another AD 9851 upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. Um, why have we got a second DDS generator? One inside, one outside. Hmm. Could that be? Because I'm just speculating here that they're that they're um, basically running them synchronized so that one, you know, this one in here is the uh, generator, right? And the actual uh, generator itself for the source output. And the other one might be so that uh, the device under test doesn't affect the source and so that they can um, do the reflection measurement using this one as the phase reference, perhaps. That's, that's my first guess. And next to that, we've got an ultra-precision AD8676. Uh, Ooh, special. Don't know what the top job up there is. That doesn't, uh, that's just a, uh, probably, that looks like a voltage reference. So down here, we've got some filtery doodad going on. Check that out. And then we've got our six, what, six op amps? What do we got? And these are AD 8170s. These are muxes, so I can only presume that they're muxing in uh, different filtering there. These ones up here, ah, 8007s again. Oh, no, only two of those. Two 8007s and one, ah, that's just an OPA 2277 uh, low-noise amp. So anyway, so they're the drivers. Looks like they're the drivers for the output. So then we've got our output protection resistors and f six uh, read relays again. They'd just be the same meter uh, model, I'm sure. Yep. I wonder if they're shielded. Have to look up the exact part number on that. All right, now let's take a look at the receiver. You can see my new camera. Microphone cable there. Ta-da! Oh. Anyway, we do have an internal shield. So <laughs> there's nothing in here except... Uh, Three rear read relays, a couple of uh, resistors, a few passives, and that's about it. And over here, we have just a bunch of, well, you know, 8-pin SOs, and that looks like the only thing special in here. That must be our 24-bit ADC, is it? Or are they implementing that in the Altera Cyclone 4? Hmm. And in case you're wondering, is there any magic on the bottom here? Well, no, it's just uh, some a passive, you know, maybe a couple of uh, driver trennies for the relay, um, stuff like that. But apart from that, no, there's nothing on the bottom. No man behind the curtain. Oh, come on. For five and a half grand, one of the nude virgins assembling this thing can surely clean the flux off. Okay, we've got our uh, AD8007 again, our fast stop amp, and this one up here, the AD8065, uh, that's just a um, another 140 meg fast fit uh, op amp. What else? Our AD8170 there is a MUX. Then we've got an a ultra precision op amp again. Jeez. Oh, something different. Uh, some DG419s, whenever you see DG like that, and uh, the four. Uh, series, you know it's some sort of like uh, analog switch or muxy type thing. Probably an analog switch. Jeez, well they like those, don't they? Um, do, <laughs> what's that? Another 8170 down there. Another 2277. We've seen it before. It's just an op amp and switch fest. Wow. And more over here. That's basically all there is to it. Jeez, there want to be something interesting. Here we go, ADS-1271, there's your ADC. And sure enough, that is a 24-bit ADC, but it's only 105k samples per second. So, how do you get the 50 megahertz bandwidth? Well, that's where the super heterodyne uh, receiver comes in. They actually use an intermediate frequency to get the signal in the particular uh, sampling passband for this analog to digital converter. So I'm now thinking, well, look, there's nothing else in there, nothing else doing. Uh, what are those two SO14s? They look like glue logic or something. So I'm now thinking that this um, external DDS here might actually be to generate the intermediate frequency 
so that they can uh, down convert and then sample the uh, signal uh, in the hundred and uh, you know the hundred kilohertz bandwidth of the ADC. Of course, S74HC five nine fives, everyone's favourite. <laughs> And it goes without saying that the other receiver channel is absolutely identical. There you go. With just a uh, bridge read relay to uh, uh, join them together. So that's actually uh, very simplistic. I was expecting a lot more in there, but obviously they can get the performance out of this thing by, uh, you know, super heterodyning the uh, main, well, at, the fr at each point of the frequency test, uh, each point of the frequency sweep, they just mix that down to the um, ADC in there, the uh, sample range, that 100 kilohertz sample range of the 24-bit ADC. That's how they get the performance and resolution, but of course it takes time to uh, do that. And the other thing is I didn't notice any uh, directional coupling happening here to actually uh, get the uh, reflection for the um, S11 uh, test, so for the VNA. So obviously, I think, yeah, maybe they're just um, using the second um, DDS generator here to keep the synchronization and then just switching it back through. And once you, you know, once you got the phase, you got that information that the source output here and like, or the load on the source output isn't going to affect, or, you know, it doesn't matter that it affects uh, that because they're gener generating a second DDS. But then I think they need one for the, um, they also need it for, the uh, down conversion as well, so I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they're obviously pulling this off with you know a relatively you know just basically ops you know high speed op amps and switches and uh, and you know 100 kilohertz 24 bit ADCs in this thing. So that's really quite remarkable. Hats off to Omicron. So from that point of view, it's, you know, it's worthy of the uh, price tag you pay for this thing. But yeah, it's not overly complex. I, you know, there's obviously not five and a half thousand dollars worth of, uh, you know, performance magic in here. But as I said before in the review video, you're paying for the, you know, the R&D, the engineering, the software and everything else that uh, goes along with that and making this happen. So there you go. That's a rather um, simplistic teardown, much simpler than I was expecting. But anyway, they pull it off. Zero to 50 megahertz uh, VNA plus, you know, a frequency response analyzer. It really is quite nice. Anyway, if you like that, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, uh, high-res teardown photos over on eevblog.com. And that's it. Discuss. Catch you next time. Bonus teardown. What's this? Uh, I think it's 600 bucks worth, isn't it, for this? <laughs> yeah, that's all you get, but I don't know. It's kind of okay, but yeah, definitely done by, definitely hand-soldered by nude virgins for that price. <laughs>